Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's not the end of the job. 
And in the next few minutes, I want to simply emphasize on the role of making positive, positive change through leading by example. Without having to speak much, and I'm confident that the majority of us, if not all of us, have thought about the holidays that our children are going to be going through for the next five or six weeks, and perhaps we've set plans and objectives and given a bit of a motivating speech to our children, and you know, don't waste time and do this and try to do that and try to do this and try to do that. And maybe for the most of us, we've set a program for our children, but not a program for ourselves. So we have some very clear targets and goals for our children, but not so very clear targets or goals for ourselves. Whether it's for a holiday or whether we're on holiday or not. And sometimes this is where things go wrong. In fact, sometimes speaking and then not acting upon what we are speaking and preaching is more harmful than being silent from the beginning. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemns in the Quran the one who acts in contradiction to what they speak. Or they command good, but they don't act upon it themselves. Do you command people to do good, but then forget about yourselves? As Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ كَمُوَ مَقْتَنْ عِدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ تَقُولُوا مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Oh you who believe, why do you say that which you don't do? It's a great thing with Allah that you say that which you don't do. So it's, a, it's an unpraiseworthy action to speak a lot and to do little. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the exact opposite of that. Didn't speak much, but did a lot. Didn't speak much and did a lot. And when he spoke, he spoke concisely, with concise words, didn't increase. His speeches, his, his reminders, his words were not as long as our words today. Explaining, 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 explaining. There was no need for that. But the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, despite that, despite that, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum acted according to the teachings of the Prophet with sincerity and consistently and more importantly with conviction. Conviction and certainty in their hearts. Not because they were forced by the Prophet In fact, the Prophet would eventually have to tell them to calm down in what they're doing. He will tell them to reduce their actions. Only do those things that you're capable of doing. Don't go over the top. Don't go beyond what you're capable of, of doing. And far too often do Imams and Masajid, parents, teachers, particularly teachers at Islamic schools. Because teachers at Islamic schools have put upon themselves, why I say Islamic schools particularly, and Muslim organizations particularly, because they are coming across as representatives of Islam. So scrutiny for them is going to be higher than scrutiny for anyone else, of course. That's a natural thing. I put myself forward as an Imam. I put myself forward as an Islamic studies teacher. I put myself forward as a head teacher of an Islamic school. So the standards that I set myself are high, so the accountability is going to be high. And so, if our words are constantly, Allah said this, Allah said that. The Prophet said this, the Prophet said that. And our actions contradict that. Is that going to bring about a positive, a neutral, or a negative impact on our children and those who are being impacted? A negative one. Not even a neutral one. A negative one. And this is how we build societies of hypocrites. This is how we build society of hypocrites. And hypocrisy doesn't have to mean hypocrisy that takes you out of Islam. No. We're still Muslim in Abdullah. But it can build societies of people who act outwardly in a certain circumstance, 
But elsewhere, actions are different, iman is different, sincerity is different, intentions are different. This is the harm, this is the problem. So when an imam talks about akhlaq and controlling anger and being generous and being kind, but the student only sees from him shouting and cursing and slapping and kicking and mocking and belittling, what type of impact has that got to have? And if a parent beats his child or constantly verbally abuses their child because they are always on the PlayStation instead of reciting the Quran, but they, they've never seen their parents ever pick up the Quran themselves once. Is that impactful, influential da'wah? Is that an influential reminder for our children? If I didn't speak in the first place, maybe it would have been better off. And in a moment or so, inshaAllah ta'ala, I will give an example or two of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his method of reminding his method of dealing and his method of development hoping that we adopt that in our day to day life when we're dealing with those who are under our care and those who are perhaps impacted by us أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله الأولين والآخرين وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم النبي الأمين بعثه الله بالهدى واليقين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أما بعد. As I touched upon, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's words were little, and him being critical of people was very rare as well. In criticizing was very rare. And if he reminded, he'd give general reminders and general words of encouragement and general teachings. To the extent that many of the companions, including Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As as one example, would do more than the Prophet encouraged them in active worship. More multiplied. And the Prophet would tell him to reduce his action. Reduce your fasts, reduce your prayer, reduce the amount that you recite. Not because these are not good actions, but because the Prophet wants to develop them. Develop them to be consistent. Develop them to do things with quality. Not to dive into things and then end up harming themselves. Compare that without being pessimistic, and there's a lot of good in Alhamdulillah. Compare that to the way sometimes we have to forcefully encourage our children and our students to maybe read a page of the Quran or memorize a small chapter of the Quran or stand up to pray an obligatory salah and so on. That means that something isn't going right. Forget children, just people generally our friends maybe, our families. And so the, the methods of having an impact on people, the methods of impacting, the methods of, of being a person who spreads positivity and encouragement, we need to put setting a role model as the priority. Words have their place, teaching has its place, speaking has its place. Setting a role model has, has to be a priority. And so when we are concerned about our children, our students, the community around us, the first thing that should come to mind is, how can I change myself? How can I stand out as a good role model? And that's a hundred times, if not a thousand times, more impactful and more powerful than speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking, because our community has become a community of speaking, constantly speaking. Constantly speaking. There's, there's never a time where we are not hearing people say things that seem to be good. Open up the phone, 1020 a hadith, uh, verses of the Quran, 100 reminders, roll through Facebook or Twitter, thousands of reminders and speeches and videos and, uh, and so on. Turn left, salam alaikum, reminder, turn right, salam alaikum, reminder, turn up to a wedding, someone wants a reminder, turn up to a funeral, someone wants a reminder, wherever we go, reminders and speeches and reminders and speeches. And that has its place, that has its place. But then if action and quality is lacking, 
then naturally people are going to be quite irritated and see hypocrisy because all they see is talking. And so we need to divert this and direct this towards a community, a, a, an action driven. We want to be an action driven community, an action driven people and less verbal people. That's exactly how the Prophet was, and that's exactly how the impact comes. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and our children to the right path, and to protect, protect us from evil and corruption, ideas and actions, and to purify our hearts, and to purify our actions, and to shower us with ikhlas and iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow His mercy and His forgiveness and His help to descend upon us and all the Muslims who are suffering around the world. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma fi lana wa khamna wa afina wa afu'ana. Allahumma ak, Allahumma ati nubu sana taqwaha wa zakiya anta qayba muzakaha anta wiwa wa mulaha. Allahumma salli wa sallam 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 Just before we start, so just a couple of announcements. Uh, for the next four weeks, inshallah, we're going to have a holiday club for the uh, for girls between 6 and 16. That will be every Monday and Tuesday. If you wish to register your child, please come either tonight, to uh, starting between 5 and 7. Otherwise, um, you can call on the number that's displayed on the poster. And uh, they will be just each other, inshallah. That will be every Monday, Tuesday, if you can get them one, inshallah, just for girls between 6 and 16. Also, inshallah, Mr. Uh, Zahid will be discussing tonight, inshallah, between Mayu and Isha, uh, some controversial issues, inshallah, but I want to make easy for me, uh, such as the Kheer and the uh, Hijra and Bira and a um, few other issues. That will be done for over the course of six weeks, inshallah. So if you can attend, and I'm also going to have the uh, tea with them tonight, inshallah. Also, if I can urge you to support the masjid, whatever you can, inshallah, and Allah will get back over to you. Zakum wa 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 wa
الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 